Have you ever looked at an image and you thought, I should make this black and white, but maybe the black and white filter inside of On One Photo Raw is a little intimidating or confusing? Well, today we're going to take a look at that, unpack it, so that way you are more familiar with creating black and white images using On One Photo Raw. Let's go. Here we are inside of On One Photo Raw, and if you want to follow along, you can definitely do so by using the link in the description box below. Now, if you want to pre-order Photo Raw 2026 and save a little bit of money, consider using the coupon code FREEWILL10 between now and October 31st, 2025. That is an affiliate coupon, which just means that I make a commission from everyone who uses it. I greatly appreciate everyone who supports the channel in that way. Now. What I've done so far to this image is I've applied Brilliance AI because, you know, why not? Now, let me show you what this image looks like without it. So this is the straight out of camera. This is the raw file that you'll be getting. And this is with Bruins AI applied. Now, after you've applied all of your basic develop settings, it's time to start working with the effects and the black and white filter is one of those tools that I recommend you either put first or last in your effects stack. Now, if you're not familiar with the effects stack, that's over here on the effects pane. And then when you get to the effects uh, module workspace, whatever we want to call this, I don't know. You tell me what you call this down in the comment section below. But when you click on effects, if you had 20 effects here, I would recommend putting the black and white filter either first or last. It's completely up to you. It doesn't matter. You can put it in the middle, but that's how I typically get the best results. Now, we're going to go ahead and activate this one, and we will collapse everything here. And you can see kind of the basic, uh, I guess we'll call them sections of the filter. The first one is the opacity slider. This is just the intensity of the effect applying to your image. Most of the time, you're going to want this to be at 100%. But if you ever want to just get a subdued look on your image, you could always just apply a black and white filter and then kind of just pull down on the opacity. And that gives a aesthetic that is different in you know many people's photography. But we're going to leave it at 100% for today. Just wanted to show you that. Now, the next step down or the next section, I should say, is the style section. And the styles are actually really cool because they're like presets for the filter. And yes, you can create your own if you get a look that you really, really like. I'll show you how to do that here in a second. But I can just click through yellow, red, and these are kind of mimicking the filters. Like if you were to have a uh, green, yellow, or red filter, on the front of your lens when you took this photo in black and white. And I'm no expert at this, by the way. I just know that that's what it's simulating or at least trying to imitate. Uh, but if you click on the more option, you get a whole lot of extra uh, styles or presets for this particular filter. And these are all built into on one. I don't have any of my own personal styles actually loaded here. so. We're looking at the ones that hopefully you see in your version of On One. And as I cycle through, you can see what it does to the image. They're literally just uh, presets or settings that are configured for the black and white filter. This is not the same as a preset over here on the left side, right? This is only for the black and white filter. Really, really cool, really fast way of getting a look on your image. So let's go ahead and reset that, make sure that we're reset. The next place or the next section is the conversion section. And this is probably one of the most important sections inside of the entire module, because this is how you're telling on one to manipulate or modify the colors in your image. So as you can see, we have these garage doors that are full of color. Uh, and then we also have the plants and the trees over on the right side and left side of the image that are full of color. And then there's a little bit of blue in the sky. So that all translates to these sliders over here. If I pull up on the blue, I'm going to increase the brightness of the blues. And if I pull down on the blue, I'm going to darken the blues. And you can see that taking place here in the sky. 
So just moving this back and forth and you can see how that works. This really works no different than any other software when it comes to the conversion of the color. Now you do have a few other options here. The first one is this picker tool. If I click on the garage door here and I pull this left or right, you can see I can manipulate the brightness of the color response just by using this picker tool, clicking and selecting. Now you have to do this for every single color that you want to manipulate or area of the image that you want to manipulate. So if I come up here and this is apparently pulling a lot of reds, you can see that I now have to come back, click on the picker tool again and see if we can move anything over here on these trees, which, you know, so I digress on that. Uh, let's just go ahead and reset this whole thing real quick. And the next section or the next part of the color response option is the auto off or the auto feature. And I don't use this as frequently, but essentially if you're not sure what to move, I don't know how on one is calculating what needs to move in which direction to get what type of final result. Uh, which is why I don't really use this often because it doesn't seem to have a rhyme or a reason. If anyone knows that, please <laughs> drop it in the comment section, uh, but I cannot figure it out. So I typically don't use it, but you can see it doesn't really do much of anything for this image. Um, it brightened up this little area right here. If I turn it off and turn it on, you can see it's just brightening up these areas, but I don't think that that's necessary. That's just a personal opinion, right? Uh, but inside of the conversion, we also have another method of converting the color, and that is the channel mixer. So if you click the drop down, select channel mixer, this is a much more simplified version of converting the color because you get this color slider or this wheel, if you will, this you know little slider, node on a slider. And as you pull it, you'll notice that it is changing the image. You don't have to know much about this. Like you just pull the slider. I like this option when I'm like, eh, let me just see what else I can get. Um, but typically I'm on the color response and I'll look at the image by holding the backslash key and you can kind of tell what colors are in the photo. And then I just have to ask myself, okay, do I want this to be brighter or darker? And typically I want to move things in the direction that they're already leaning towards, because in my opinion, for black and white images, you want to create as much contrast as possible in the photo. And so I want to move those garage doors to be a little bit brighter. They would also look really good being darker with everything being bright around it. So there's really no right or wrong method. It's just whatever you choose to do. Like I can go in that direction with it and then I can even pull down on the yellows and that's also helping out mess around with the magentas. It's not really doing much. We already know that I would like the sky to be a little bit darker. Typically darker skies and black and whites look really good, typically, all right? But I digress, reset that, minimize conversion, and let's jump into the next section, which is tone. Now, this section works just like any other tone adjustment inside of On One, so I'm not gonna insult anyone's intelligence, but you do have brightness, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, and detail. The slider that's missing from here is the mid-tone slider. We have that in the local and develop, we do not have it in the tone section here. So pay attention to that and know how that's going to impact your overall editing style. Now, I'll have to do a separate video talking about the tonal tools um, inside of On One because just trying to explain that in this one video will take a very long time. But just know that if you want it to increase or decrease brightness, you can do so right here inside of the black and white filter. It's kind of a one stop shop for black and white editing uh, because after you get done with tone, then you can infuse color or what they call the toner. And what I can do is click on this little box here 
And based off of the operating system, I'm using a Mac. I get the color wheels and, you know, the basic color tools. But if you're on a Windows, you'll get something similar, I imagine. And then if I pull up on my brightness value here, I can just add whatever color I want. So let's add some red into the highlights. I'll close that down. And then to actually apply it, I need to pull up on my amount slider. And you can see how I'm just applying a whole bunch of red. And now it's like a colorization of the image. So you got to be careful with that. You can go pretty far. But this is essentially the split tone tool with a twist. So I'm going to go ahead and apply just a little bit there of that red color. And then I'll apply a little bit of the green. But... When I do that, you can see that when I apply the colors to the highlights and to the shadows, I'm losing contrast in my image and it doesn't look the greatest. And that's where this button down here comes in handy. Uh, the preserve whites and blacks button is really what I would call the recover your contrast button. But I didn't name the tools because, you know, I didn't make it on one. I'm going to go ahead and click this and you'll see exactly why I say it's called the recovery of contrast button because it does exactly that. It recovers the contrast in your image. So if I turn it off, it's kind of a flat, dull image. And then if I turn it back on, you can see, look at that. I'm getting all these uh, pure whites and pure blacks in the background. So I wouldn't argue that this is uh, doing exactly what it says it's going to do, but the way I always think of it is I need to get my contrast back after I added in some tonal adjustments or toner adjustments. But we're going to go ahead and reset that because we don't need it. And then we'll jump into the last section, which is the film grain. Now, the film grain section is not all that impressive, if you ask me, but it's a nice tool to have because uh, sometimes you just want to get a little bit of a nostalgic feel to your image. So if I was to throw on some of this Ilford XP2 Super 400 grain emulation here, and then if I increase the size, you could probably see that a little bit better if I zoomed in. And if you look in the shadowed area, I'm just going to turn this to none real quick. And you can see that it's a cleaner looking image. And then if I come back to this 400, it just kind of grits it up a little bit. Really cool, really easy way of applying some grain to your photo and making this look a little bit more analog and rich. But uh, overall, I typically do not apply my film grain using the black and white filter because I do like to separate a lot of these things in my edit. So these last three options, I would have three separate tools or filters applied. I would apply a tone enhancer if I absolutely needed it. And then I would apply the split tone or I would add in a color balance. But for the sake of replicating exactly what's available inside of the black and white filter, I would click on split tone. But notice when I open split tone, I don't get that recovery of the uh, contrast or the preserve whites and blacks button. So that's kind of the, uh, the nuance there. And then of course, the last one that I would add is film grain. If I wanted to apply film grain here, but typically what I've been doing is applying film grain as a texture because inside of the textures option, uh, you can do a lot more when it comes to applying things um, just because you can transform it and do you could do some stuff. But this is not a video about none of these extra pieces here. This is talking about the black and white filter, which in a nutshell, that's exactly what it is, uh, or at least the things that I covered. Now, here's what I will say. When I hit add filter, one of my favorite tools to apply with the black and white filter is the bleach bypass. So if I click that, you probably didn't see it happen. So let me just turn off the bleach bypass and then turn it back on. The reason why I bring this up is because remember earlier I told you that I didn't get that preserve whites and blacks or recovery of my contrast button. This is my contrast recovery 
option. If I were to split everything up in that method that I showed you earlier, this is what I would apply. But I apply this whenever I want to make my image a little bit more dramatic because this gives me some controls uh, that I have available to me inside of the black and white filter, but I can mask this in in very particular areas if I want to get that granular. And that's the reason why I like to split my options up. There you have the black and white filter in a really, really rough nutshell. I know that I went fast and I was kind of not necessarily all over the place, but I did go through some things really quickly. The goal was to get you familiar with the black and white filter. So that way, if you were feeling a little intimidated, hopefully you now have a little bit more understanding about using the tool in your own workflows. And if you got questions, then please leave it in the comment section below. Now, if you wanna learn how to use on one, the best way is to sign up for a coaching call with me. You can do so using the link in the description box below. Another way of learning on one is to sign up for my training course, which is hosted on my website. It's the on one basics program. I'm using an older version inside of this program, so I just want to be clear with that. However, I am going to update it with the 2026 version of On1 once that's released. So if you sign up now, you'll get access to all of that new material as soon as the software is released and I can get those videos up into the program. If you want to purchase On1 Photo Raw 2026, or at least the pre-order of it, you can use the coupon code FREEWILL10. It'll save you some money at checkout. I do make a commission, but I greatly appreciate everyone who uses it. So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.